Hey, welcome to Gold Scratch. So, uh, this is a follow-up video about a 400 Pontiac GTO engine that's been the subject of uh, other videos on my channel. And a few weeks ago, we made a video about the subject was matching your compression to your camshaft to get optimum results. And the point of that was uh, the first time we <clears throat> built this 400 Pontiac GTO engine uh, and we dynoed it about a year ago. We weren't really happy with the results. And so Mike Kimball, who's the owner of that engine, started digging into the documents. We do lots of documentation with every build and uh, dug into that and found out that we possibly didn't have a good match between the camshaft and, uh, and the compression. So the subject of that video was, uh, we only had 140 foot pounds of or, or, uh, PSI of compression, sorry, PSI of compression on the first build. So uh, we decided to make a change and then re it to see what the, what the difference would be. So we took the heads off and put thinner head gaskets and we went from a 65 thou head gasket to a 25 thou head gasket. And we also advanced the camshaft and we did a follow-up uh, dyno test of that as well and we now have 170 psi compression so the point of it is how much difference does that 30 psi of compression make and so the video we're making a clip right now because when we made the video a week ago or so uh, we lost some footage uh, because the battery went dead on our camera and didn't get all the details and when i made the follow-up i didn't have I kind of winged the information. I didn't have all the information uh, correct. So we're overriding that with, uh, with this correction point right now. So um, the results will speak for themselves. We're going to show you the numbers on the actual dyno sheets and give you a recap of what we accomplished. So when you add compression, you should add power everywhere. When you change timing, you don't necessarily. If you advance, typically, if you advance a camshaft, you will improve your power down low and at sacrifice it at the top end. And when you retire the camshaft, you'll get the opposite result. So we did two things because we advanced the cam anyway, because if you've watched my videos before, you've heard this speech before. I like to build street motors with good low end torque, throttle response, drivability. And that means getting the power down low in the three, four, five thousand 5,000 RPM range where the driver is going to enjoy it more than up high where he's not going to be very often. So we advanced the cam anyway, and the results were predictable. We got more horsepower and both most horsepower and torque. Uh, specifically, we gained a lot of torque down low. We'll show you the numbers. Uh, and we even gained power at the top end. But not as much. I, I, I kind of think that if we had not advanced the cam and left it and just added the compression, we probably would have gained more top end power than we did. Uh, once again, advancing the cam helps your low end power, but in a camshaft is a compromise. It's always a compromise. What the duration of a camshaft does, it takes the power potential of the engine and it moves it wherever you want it to go. If you have a high duration, camshaft you're going to make power torque up high and if you have a low duration you're going to make power down, torque down low so uh, once again uh, advancing the cam has the same effect advancing it makes power down low so uh, just a summary and this does uh, contradict a little bit of the caption at the very end of this video but these are the correct numbers because I was winging it at the time what we gained was and we're looking at the dyno sheets you can see the New ones and the old ones. These are from a year ago. The paper's faded. So uh, at peak, we gained 11 horsepower and 21 foot-pounds of torque by making those changes. And on average, we gained 9 horsepower and 16 foot-pounds of torque by making those changes. And once again, I think we would actually made more horsepower up high if we hadn't, hadn't uh, advanced the camshaft. Typically, drag racers retard camshafts. They don't care what... Torque and horsepower is at 3,000 RPM because they're never there. They're always at the high end of their RPM range. So, but we do. We want the power and torque down low. So we made substantial gains in the 3,500 
where the dry nose starts to pick up 3,400, uh, all the way through right up to 5,000 RPM, specifically in torque and in horsepower by making those uh, two changes. So was the exercise successful? We believe it was because uh, 21 foot-pounds of torque, you are actually going to feel that in the car, and it's right in the range. We actually made that gain at like 36, 3,700 RPM uh, in that range, so just where... Uh, you're going to be driving the car uh, when you get mo when you get this motor back into the car. So, so just to summarize that, this is just a caption, and now we're going to show you the rest of the video uh, of the exercise. We we were able to script the help of some pretty good guys. We had um, Austin Ward there helping us. I introduced him in the video. He's a quadrajet expert. This in, this is a, a stock intake manifold and quadrajet carburetor from a 400 Pontiac GTO. And I'm not a quadrajet expert, so Daryl is, and you'll see him take over and do his uh, magic for us in getting this to optimize as much as possible on the dyno. So watch the rest of the dyno, and thanks for watching Gold's Garage, and we'll see you at the end of it. Okay, welcome to Gold's Garage again. As you can see, we're back at Daryl Waters uh, Dyno Service in Springfield, Ontario. And uh, just about a week ago, we made a video about this same engine. And if you've watched my videos, you've seen it before more than once because we dynoed this engine previously and we were disappointed in the power. The owner was disappointed in the power particularly. Uh, I think it put out 355 on the manifolds and about 375 on it with headers on it. It's got this. Right now, we're back to the stock uh, original OEM style uh, manifolds that came in the car and that's the way it's going to run in the car so we actually plan to get everything set as much power as we can with this and then we're going to install headers and see what it does with the headers on after that so what's happened since the last time we did a cranking pressure uh, calculation and we had about 140 psi of cranking pressure so we dug back into the numbers that we put together with this motor and uh the camshaft had a closing, I think, of 67 degrees, closing, closing event of 67 after bought at bed center. And so we decided to try to increase the compression pressure. We took the heads off and the, in, the head gaskets that we thought were 40 thou, should have measured them, were actually 65 thou. So that helped to increase the compression. We put uh, head gaskets with 25 thou thickness in replace of them. And while I had it apart, I advanced the cam by four degrees. So instead of valve event closing at 67 degrees, it's at 64. I started on my uh, test stand at home, did a compression test after that. With it cold, we have 170 PSI of compression. So really the, the point of this video is how much 30 PSI of compression is going to help. We have the dyno sheets from before, so we're going to make some pulls here and see what it makes and see if the 30 PSI of compression, advancing the timing, uh, what it does to the uh, horsepower and torque number. So uh, we'll be making uh, subsequent uh, takes after we make the first pull. We have not made a pull yet. Okay, we're in the dyno cell at uh, Waters Dyno Service and we have a quadrajet expert with us today. Austin Ward, who's a local drag racer and very, very successful one, and he's an expert on quadrajet carburetors, and I'm not. So mm -hmm. we uh, conscripted him to come and help us out with the tune on this uh, 400 Pontiac engine. We already talked about it. And the issue is, on this one, if we had a Holly carburetor, we can measure air fuel ratio, I could do that. I don't know how to do it with quadrajets. So I'm going to turn it over to, to uh, Austin and let him explain what we're doing here to make a change. Well, to me, on the initial poll, we looked at the numbers of the dyno and they told us it was a little lean. So we're going to richen it up and in a holly, you would change jet sizes, go up from a, maybe an 80 to an 82 for a, to increase the, air, the fuel. And in a water jet, you have, you have a metering rod that hangs down in a little orifice that's fixed in the carburetor and they change the, the tip or the taper on the metering rod. You can also do it with different hangers. These hold, the, hold it in there and as the air door opens, it lifts the rods out. So this taper richens up as the 
as the as it opens up, it gets richer for wide open throttle versus part throttle. And you can get one that holds it higher, it'll richen it up, or you just change the size of its tip. And all these are the different sizes available instead of jets. You just pick here right from uh, like a D. This is really lean. That would be super lean compared to this would be super rich. And so somewhere in the middle, you come up with your right air fuel ratio that makes it work properly. So we got one in there that we're gonna go up just a couple steps and it'd be the same as maybe going up a few jet sizes and we'll see the results. We're good, thanks Austin, because that's an expertise that I do not have with quarter jet carburetors. So um, we're gonna let Austin make the change right now and we'll make another pull and see if it helps. I never monkey with quad jets. I never. Them, but I've never dug into like Yeah, take them. Taking them apart. Should take that. Makes it a lot easier when that rod's out of the way. Okay, so Austin uh, just noticed something else. Uh, uh, the choke on the quarter jet mechanism is connected to prevent the back barrels from opening when the choke is on. So we're making sure that they're independent now and the, the, the throttle plates open, but if these air uh, valves don't open, you're not gonna get much air through there, otherwise it gets drawn through. So uh, Austin just wired that open, so now the choke's nice and rigid. And hopefully we'll get full flow. Okay, we're... My dad is really famous. <laughs> okay, we're back here. Uh, we're going to close up shop here at uh, Darrell Waters Dino Service in Springfield, Ontario. We've been flogging on this Pontiac motor uh, long enough. And first of all, I want to thank everybody that helped out here. Austin, who you saw in the picture before, is a quadrajet expert, and we relied on him to help get this quadrajet tuned in correctly. Did a great job for us. Uh, Alex and Tom, part of my team that came with me, they always help out. They're in the background. We don't get them in the screen very much, but uh, we like to thank them. And my new buddy, my new assistant, Cam, yeah. and he's been a big help all day long, too. Yeah. He's a kind of a dyno expert. He hangs around the dyno all day long, so he learns stuff. So uh, here's the story. So we, before we got here, we said that we made a couple changes because we weren't happy with the torque and horsepower the last time we dynoed it. So just to cover that off, we put a, a thinner head gasket in it and we gained from 9.1 to 9.8 static to pressure ratio. And then I also uh, advanced the cam four degrees uh, as well while we had it apart and we gained from 140 to 170 psi compression pressure by doing that and we had an expectation frankly that we'd get a little bit more than that so we did gain so with the the uh, we actually got better performance this time with the uh, the ram air uh, uh, cast iron manifolds and we gained an average of 10 horsepower and 10 foot pounds of torque we were kind of hoping for 20, to be honest, but that's what we gained. So we, we're here to tell you what, what the reality is, and that's what we gained. Our peak went from 353 on the, with the manifolds on to 365, and our torque, uh, peak, our peak horsepower went from 353 to 365. Peak horsepower went from 4, 
41 to 462. But we also gained, which was the purpose of advancing the cam, uh, if you follow through the range, all the way through the low end range of torque, uh, lots, of, lots of good torque gains in the bottom, which is when you're going to drive a car on the street and you step on the gas, it's the torque that you feel. Horsepower is just a number that we calculate. Uh, torques what spin the tires and uh, we'll have enough to spin the tires for uh, for Dale's Kimball's uh, GTO so uh, thanks for watching hope you like and subscribe thanks to Cam again for helping us out and we had a good day here we just about uh, run out of gas in the dyno so we got to call it call it a day here so thanks for watching Gold's Garage <laughs>